Hello, welcome to SIGCOM 21 topic preview on distributed systems and network support. I'm Puneet Sharma from Hewlett Packard Labs. The session that we are previewing uh, will be held on August 24th uh, in the morning. So before we get started, let's actually uh, look back and define what we mean by distributed systems. Uh, actually, a definition of distributed system from uh, Tenenbaum's book on distributed systems. It is a system whose components are located on different network computers, which communicate and coordinate their actions by passing mass messages from one another to any system. And these components together are interacting with one another in order to achieve a common goal. So think of these as different components which have these state machines which they are trying to coordinate using uh, communications uh, and message passing with each other so uh, in terms of uh, what are the hard problems that uh, some of these sessions on distributed systems should look like uh, look at um, <clears throat> uh, matthias actually uh, put it very well uh, in his tweet uh, about uh, the two problems of once delivery and guaranteed order of messages. Uh, jokes aside, these are uh, actually communication abstractions uh, uh, about uh, totally ordering and causally ordering the messages between different components. So, uh, causally uh, ordered uh, gives the primitive for happens before message delivery. So if uh, there is a process such that message M1 is sent by or received at P before P sends M2, that basically implies that M1 happens before M2, right? That's the happens before message delivery. And uh, <clears throat> the totally ordered abstraction uh, <clears throat> guarantees that messages delivered to all the group members are in same order. While uh, some of this communication abstraction between the components of distributed systems might provide greater efficiency um, as well as uh, reduced complexity and development time uh, because the applications have to be written on these abstractions. There are um, <clears throat> concerns about um, these abstractions being uh, communication level incidents rather than being capturing the application le level semantics themselves. And of course, uh, because it needs uh, bookkeeping uh, on <clears throat> the systems about various messages, uh, there are concerns about uh, violation of end-to-end -end argument as well. So, uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, other important aspects, which uh, is kind of the theme of uh, this session as well, is the advent and ad adoption of programmable networking data planes and the in-network processing itself. So things like software defined networking and uh, uh, P4 uh, use of smart NICs uh, for offloading some or, or doing some of the uh, network computations instead of host OS on the devices themselves and general purpose accelerators uh, for uh, <coughs> uh, particular functions like storage and so on. So I would not get into details of uh, some of the programmable data planes, but uh, Gianni has done a wonderful job uh, on his preview on the session four on programmable data planes, and I would recommend that you go and uh, watch <coughs> uh, his preview. So this brings uh, us to the first paper uh, that I want to review um, in this session and uh, please note that this is not the order of the presentation of the papers in the uh, technical session uh, so this paper is called one pipe scalable total order communication in data center networks which tries to provide the causal and total order communication abstraction that uh, we had uh, talked about uh, and uh, <clears throat> providing two kinds of services uh, both best effort as well as reliable with restricted uh, failure at atmosity for uh, the scattering or the uh, group distribution of uh, the messages. 
um, <clears throat> as we had briefly touched upon uh, it the um, way one pipe tries to achieve uh, uh, this communication abstraction is by leveraging network programmability uh, basically offloading the message timestamping and the bookkeeping associated to the programmable switches which are being adopted uh, increasingly and uh, using their implementation and uh, <clears throat> evaluation they show how uh, one pipe is linearly scalable both in terms of throughput as well as latency uh, for uh, four kinds of applications the transactional key value store uh, the tpcc uh, benchmark uh, remote data structures as well as distributed storage replication. So as uh, we move and talk about uh, the distributed computing itself and distributed systems, uh, these distributed systems are <clears throat> working on um, the amount of data which, which is being generated. So every two years we are creating more data than through all of history. And as we are experiencing the exp exponential increase in data coming from uh, explosion of data sources, the amount of time which is available uh, to <clears throat> turn that data into a meaningful action using the distributed systems that we are talking about is becoming vanishingly small. Right? That has introduced the capability gap between the compute uh, and uh, data uh, that is available. So <clears throat> there has been sort of a lot of work in trying to shift how computing on this amount of data is done uh, and uh, some some of the uh, directions that this shift is taking is move from uh, building app centric uh, distributed systems to more data centric computing where uh, the data is at core of uh, uh, <clears throat> the systems being built instead of these applications being in their silos uh, and then <clears throat> having the apps access uh, the data centers them so the data centric uh, compute and pools of data uh, directly uh, similarly a lot of the implementations are going from monolithic uh, systems to microservices uh, based, based systems uh, so again trying to think think of this as the disaggregation of uh, the compute itself and a lot of sharing uh, in terms of uh, how the computer architectures are shifting towards turning them uh, into cloud native as well as the sort of uh, support for multi-tenancy becoming uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, native or key requirements uh, in the systems uh, that are being built so <clears throat> again as we were talking about uh, the uh, data centric computing right so think of this as there are uh, large uh, data stores whether they are in memory or other uh, storage systems uh, there are different applications which are uh, trying to access this uh, key value stores uh, all of us uh, have heard about so memcached redis being some of the in memory uh, key value stores uh, that are being built and uh, the performance of these uh, 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 key value stores is measured in terms of what the memory efficiency is right the amount of metadata per object uh, which is required uh, the throughput as well as scalability in terms of uh, providing uh, various properties uh, per cpu core for <coughs> creating these key, val key value stores and managing them uh, and so forth so uh, when these key value uh, stores are there, there are multiple access mechanisms to manage uh, the key value stores uh, from remote uh, procedure calls or RPC to remote memory access with uh, different kinds of benefits with respect to functionality or the efficiency uh, as we are talking about. <clears throat> so um, the uh, next paper is related to the aspects that we are talking it's called clique map productizing an rma based distributed ca caching system uh, this is a description of uh, the architectural choices for google's in memory distributed caching system where it uh, one of the key aspects is the hybrid access mechanisms uh, uh, they are using they're using rma for uh, efficiency 
but at the same time uh, <clears throat> for the less performance critical paths uh, they want to use rpc the authors want to use rpc for ease of programming burden on them uh, it's a system uh, which has been operational for three years serves more than one petabyte of uh, dram uh, which is the underlying uh, <clears throat> in memory store for uh, serving multitude of end user uh, visible services um, there is a similar uh, <clears throat> you know, work in space uh, from facebook uh, for building building the key value store which might be of interest uh, if you want to learn more about uh, the features of uh, such systems uh, <clears throat> so again um, with respect to distributed computing one of the uh, other sort of uh, uh, shift or uh, trend which is being uh, looked at is uh, composable disaggregated infrastructure uh, where uh, I, uh, IDC defines it as a category of infrastructure systems that make use of high bandwidth and low, inter, uh, low latency interconnects to aggregate uh, compute, storage and network fabric resources into a shared resource pool that can be allocated on demand, uh, <clears throat> uh, allocated on demand, right? So think of this as uh, taking, uh, disaggregating your uh, hosts uh, into resource pools of storage, compute, and networking, and then uh, combining them together uh, as uh, required. So in particular, uh, uh, some of the work in this session that you will hear about uh, will be about data stores. So let's actually look at some of the cost and latency trade-offs uh, depending on the storage technologies uh, that there are. Uh, remember, I was talking about uh, data-centric computing and the volume of data uh, which is being generated. So <clears throat> there are different um, uh, there are different uh, uh, storage options from tape uh, all the way to the DRAM. Uh, like the Google use case uh, that the Google paper click map uh, that we just uh, talked about um, and uh, which have varying costs uh, to the latencies uh, and so on and the non-volatile memory uh, and the persistent memory are some of the nice curves that you can actually see uh, for uh, these trade-offs that there are. <clears throat> so uh, in terms of the NVMe uh, that is the storage protocol for flash memory and uh, because again in the disaggregated infrastructure you have to take the pools of storage and compute and uh, <clears throat> combine them together on some sort of transport uh, the NVMeOF uh, uh, is the mapping of uh, the storage protocol onto different networking protocols which might be connecting these uh, pools of resources together in particular, uh, some of the problems uh, or some of the challenges with the uh, NVMe OF is uh, the performance variability itself. So the underlying transport, the MTUs, uh, how much of it is, is, is being offloaded and the drive performance itself, right? The drives which form uh, the storage pools and what the workload mixes are, are they read heavy, write heavy and so forth. So <clears throat> there is, a lot of work which has been done to characterize this performance uh, variability uh, that you can <clears throat> uh, look at uh, before uh, the papers themselves. So um, <clears throat> again, since we are talking about performance and the distributed systems, so if you uh, look at NVMe OF uh, with a lot of performance variability or uh, the other even the compute resources and as the workload is coming uh, sometimes the trail latencies uh, for uh, uh, these uh, <clears throat> different pools and components in the distributed systems can be very high uh, and um, <clears throat> the impact uh, in as we actually make these distributed systems larger uh, and larger scale uh, is compounded so to give you an example, if you look at uh, this graph that I borrowed from uh, Dean and Barros's paper, uh, paper called the tail at scale, um, <clears throat> if uh, uh, the reason the impact is getting compounded comes from the fact that different components might be waiting for responses from, uh, um, from different uh, 
uh, uh, other components themselves. So uh, even if uh, you're waiting for one in 100 resources, uh, about uh, there is a chance that 63% uh, of uh, the requests might see service latency greater than one second, right? Similarly, if it is even if it is less, as in uh, one in 10,000 uh, have uh, the high tail latency uh, waiting for, then uh, with the 200 servers as the number of server actually grows, uh, if for 20%, uh, you will still, uh, about 18%, you will still see uh, the high latency, right? So the, uh, uh, the, the thing with the design of these distributed systems is that the latency variability itself uh, cannot be Im uh, eliminated. So uh, the systems uh, being built have to uh, adopt uh, and uh, include uh, latency tolerant techniques as uh, we will, uh, the, as some of the papers in this session will uh, actually talk about. So um, <clears throat> this brings, uh, to the uh, uh, another paper in the uh, session called Gimbal, enabling multi-tenant storage disaggregation on SmartNIC JBOFs. Uh, this is uh, just a bunch of flash, right? That's what JBOF stands for. So it takes the particular use case of uh, disaggregated NVMe storage, uh, which uh, uh, builds uh, the software switch using the SmartNICs to connect different ethernet ports or the transport and the NVMe uh, drives that there are. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, as the NVMe performance uh, variability is there, uh, some of the key aspects of uh, Gimbal are trying to estimate what the runtime bandwidth capacity or the per IO cost of the storage devices. And uh, they have done a wonderful job of uh, taking the ideas from traditional networking and applying them to the domain of uh, managing storage resources, including actually some of the uh, concepts of fairness in multi-tenancy uh, that has <clears throat> not been uh, uh, done before to, uh, to provide QoS and high utilization in these systems. And uh, based on uh, their evaluation, they actually show better utilization as well as a significant reduction in the tail latency uh, for disaggregated storage. <clears throat> Till now, we have been talking about distributed systems with multiple components, right? Uh, but then there is also uh, variability and latency uh, associated with each of these individual hosts or components. So uh, one of the LinkedIn uh, case studies was about a three component, a cache server, a database server, and a API. Uh, layer uh, use case that they were looking at where they observed that uh, <clears throat> there was a high latency of 30 milliseconds uh, uh, even though it was in 99th percentile but uh, <clears throat> so they actually tried to uh, debug and figure out what was happening uh, and they saw that there was a 30 millisecond one-way delay uh, from uh, to the cache server right so uh, to be able to actually distinguish uh, between them, they looked at uh, maybe it was coming up from the individual host uh, stack uh, that there was uh, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, then uh, the latency, uh, high latency they were seeing was uh, specifically one way to the cache server, not, uh, or not in the other uh, servers in the rack itself. And upon further uh, <clears throat> investigation, they actually found that the, it was the problem from the database server, which was sending a microburst of traffic to the cache server, which led to high bandwidth utilization, leading to the high 99th uh, percentile uh, latency itself. So it's in some ways, the latencies from these distributed components uh, individually can uh, turn the service latency to be very high as well. Uh, so the last paper uh, in this uh, session that I want to review is called, uh, is titled Under Understanding Host Network Stack Overheads. And it focuses in particular on high speed links and long flows uh, because the performance and how uh, the, the time spent for packet processing on each of these uh, different layers of the stack uh, might be higher. So uh, <clears throat> instead of 
protocol processing uh, at these high speeds. Uh, one of the observations uh, from this paper is that the data copying is the performance uh, bottleneck and also uh, the uh, because of large bandwidth, the bandwidth delay product is high and the gap between cache sizes uh, and BDP can lead to suboptimal throughput. And similarly, each core uh, is being actually uh, <clears throat> utilized fully to only be able to get a throughput of about 4.2 uh, gigabits per second, which is insufficient to uh, support the high link speeds uh, that this uh, paper looks at. So overall, uh, four uh, different papers, each trying to highlight uh, interesting aspects of uh, <clears throat> the distributed systems and how uh, in a novel way network support can be enhanced and improved uh, to uh, bring uh, lower tail latencies and improved scalability and throughput. Thank you. I enjoyed uh, previewing these papers and I hope you will enjoy the presentations in the technical session as well. Bye.